Judas Iscariot is the apostle of the Christian Zionists. Now bear with me on this. We're in the aftermath right now of this uh, shooting at the synagogue in California. A very stupid, very wicked act, born of the philosophy that has been encouraged by secularists, Jewish and Christian nominally, uh, and imposed on the United States and on the Western culture for many decades. That philosophy of evolution, evolutionary biology, uh, the extreme evolutionary biology and Darwinism of eugenics and of the utter philosophical meaningless of, of human life. Th this directly produces not only this shooting at the synagogue, which is going to be used as an excuse to shut down people like me from even criticizing anything any Jewish person might say, but by the way, I'm criticizing the secularists across the board. And specifically today, I'm criticizing the Christian Zionists, most of whom are not Jews. So Christian Zionism is that particularly nasty version of the racist ideology of Zionism, but that is advocated by Christians. A dear friend, I'm here in Uganda right now, a dear friend sat down with me two nights ago and showed me a PowerPoint presentation that was born of the Western Christian Zionism, which has also infected many uh, Christian communities, especially evangelical communities within African uh, Christian communities. And he showed me the PowerPoint one by one by one. I don't have time to go through it all now, but it included many uh, misquotations of, of scripture. And we went through them one by one by one. It took us hours. And many twistings of the scripture, specifically the Abrahamic promise of Genesis that in thy seed all the nations of the earth will be blessed and that God would bless the seed of Abraham. Uh, this PowerPoint and the Christian Zionists normally equivocate the seed of Abraham with the nation of Israel, and they conflate the land with the people as often as they want. They never clarify. Uh, you're never sure whether they're talking about the earth, the land, the geography, or the people who are physically descended from Jacob. But anyway, laying that all aside, St. Paul and the apostles were very clear, and Paul says it in the book of Galatians, the letter to the Galatians, that this seed of Abraham is Christ. And all the promises that are connected to the seed of Abraham are fulfilled in Christ himself, in Christ. So literally, Paul says, and I re it bears repeating, the seed of Abraham is Christ. And that is the crux, that is the point at which the Christians, all Zionists, have, have the, the non-Christian Jewish Zionists have missed the boat at the cross. But the Christian Zionists, claiming to believe the cross and the resurrection, have nonetheless uh, misinterp will willfully misinterpreted the seed of Abraham when we have a direct quote from the apostles, the seed of Abraham is Christ. Now, why is Judas Iscariot their apostle? I've made a big claim here. I'm telling you, it's because Judas was motivated by the same motivation that motivates Christian Zionists. Namely, Judas's primary motivation was not it was not the 30 pieces of silver, as evidenced by the fact that Judas gave back, he threw back the 30 pieces of silver, he said, take it. Now, they wouldn't take it. They bought the potter's field. That became his field. It became his curse. It became where he hanged himself after his uh, fleshly repentance. The repentance of Judas was not unto uh, restoration. It was a fleshly repentance unto despair and suicide. But he did repent. He did regret that he had done what he had done. Clearly, in him repenting and in him giving back the silver, Judas proved that his primary goal was not getting 30 pieces of silver. That was just a bonus for Judas. What he was really trying to do is the same thing the Christian Zionists are trying to do. Even as they try to shut us up using the momentum of this stupid act of uh, killing these people in the synagogue, uh, what they are trying to do is orchestrate Armageddon. This PowerPoint that my friend showed me was a perfect example. But every time you, you nail down what the Christian Zionists want, and I'm speaking specifically not about Jews, but about these mostly Gentile, so-called Christian Zionists. By the way, you're not Christians, because Christians follow the Prince of Peace. Christians do not actively try to orchestrate bloodshed and Armageddon. Okay? What they're trying to do is bring about, according to their own preconceptions, according to their own fetishistic vanity, the kingdom of God, and the enforcement of that kingdom according to their own timeline. And that's precisely what Judas was trying to do. It wasn't primarily the 30 pieces of silver that he was going for. Judas Iscariot was tr clearly 
Clearly, that's why he was so surprised and in such despair when it didn't work out this way. Clearly, Judas Iscariot was attempting to force the hand of Jesus Christ. He knew Jesus had power. He'd witnessed that power. He was trying to force Jesus to set up his kingdom right here, right now, not according to the Father's timeline, but according to Judas' timeline himself. Because Judas, remember later on when the, apostles, the other 11 apostles asked Jesus, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? What was Jesus' response to them? They asked him, and he said, it is not for you to know the times which the Father has put in his own keeping. Well, Judas, in his presumption, decided, I'm, I'm tired of waiting. I'm going <clears> to <throat> teach this Messiah, because I know he has power, to either put up or shut up. And Judas was convinced that the Messiah would uh, establish his reign on earth if Judas just arranged things in such a way that forced the hand of the Messiah. Well, things didn't work out the way Judas had anticipated it. I'm claiming he is the apostle of the Christian Zionists because they may also wind up forcing the Lord to do some things, okay? Which is what they think they want. But he may not be, and I'm telling you right now, if you're a Christian Zionist, Jesus is not the person you think he is. He is the Prince of Peace. And when you use his name and abuse his name to create war between people, to, to orchestrate the suffering of people, to orchestrate the theft of people's lands, to orchestrate the, the torture of the Palestinians, you will bring about at least your own personal Armageddon, if not the final Armageddon, and you won't be happy the way you think you're going to be happy when it comes. Are you hearing me? You're not going to be happy. He's not who you think he is, and he will not be pleased with you. He did not commission you to, to orchestrate Armageddon. All right? He commissioned you to preach the gospel of peace. And when you turn around as a believer and say, I'm tired of waiting for the Father's times, I'm going to orchestrate Armageddon, well, you've got an apostle. His name is Judas Iscariot. And if you don't re repent, you will follow in the bloody footsteps of Judas Iscariot, and you will sh take part and share in his bitter end of despair and suicide. So it's time to repent now. Stop. God, there's six things that the Lord hates, Solomon said. Seven of them are, a, are an abomination to him. And one of those, I won't go through them all. Hands that shed innocent blood, first of all. Feet that are swift and running to mischief. But the one I want to focus on is the one who sows discord between brethren. The Palestinians are Semitic people. So the one who sows discord between brethren. The discord you Christian Zionists have worked day and night to sow in the Middle East will come back and bite you with a vengeance tenfold. You better look out. You better repent now before it's too late.